It's Wednesday, August 19. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. Leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, Andrew Holness, and leader of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter Phillips, signed the Political Code of Conduct on Wednesday at Emancipation Park in Kingston. The signing was overseen by the political ombudsman, Donna Parchment Brown. By signing this morning, Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition, as leaders of your party, you promise that for campaign and election 2020, you obey the code. You are reaffirming an agreement made in 2005 in Gordon House by the then leaders of your parties. We look forward to a campaign with, without violence or intimidation, without confrontation in words or deeds, with platforms that even children can listen to and respect, that everyone is free to campaign wherever they are legally allowed, that you will commit in this campaign to repudiate both political tribalism and corruption. Let us try to settle problems and de-escalate wherever possible. Please use the office of the political ombudsman. Everyone has my number, everyone has my WhatsApp. You know I will respond immediately and I will act quickly. The agreement governs, among other things, public utterances, safety, avoidance of confrontations, and tribalism. It's full speed ahead for the September 3 general elections in Jamaica. The Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, says all candidates set to contest the election have been duly nominated. Activities took place across the island within strict COVID-19 protocols. In keeping with physical distancing rules, only a limited number of persons were allowed inside the 63 nomination centers. A nomination day Tuesday, August 18, was largely incident-free. So says Deputy Commissioner of Police Clifford Blake. Police personnel were deployed as early as 8 in the morning to secure nomination centers and ensure this stage of the electoral process was conducted in a peaceful manner. He also commended the candidates and their supporters for maintaining discipline and complying with police orders. DCP Blake also noted that the post-nomination day activities would include a review of the media protocols surrounding the upcoming polls, citing an incident in which a member of the electronic media was briefly detained after he reportedly entered a nomination center, a violation of the agreed rules. He also reiterated the need for persons to use the roadways safely following at least one incident in which persons traveling in a motorcade were involved in a vehicular crash. As of Wednesday morning, Jamaica recorded 17 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed cases since the outbreak in the country to 1,146. Of that number, 293 active cases, including nine moderately ill and one critically ill patient, are being monitored. In addition, 770 people have recovered or returned to their country of origin. 14 have died. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says the new cases consists of 11 males and 6 females with ages ranging from 4 months to 71 years. Seven of them have addresses in St. Thomas, three in St. James and two in St. Catherine. The remaining five are from the parishes of Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Mary, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth and Manchester. The ministry says six of the new cases are imported, having arrived from the United States in early July. Five are contacts of confirmed cases. The other six are under investigation. The World Health Organization, WHO, is cautioning countries not to hoard what they believe to be COVID-19 vaccines and calls for a global vaccine pact. Uh, the pandemic evolved. Countries clearly needed to come together in an unprecedented way to develop new vaccines, diagnostics, and therapeutics, and to set the stage for ensuring that they reach all people everywhere. In April, WHO convened world leaders and launched the Access to COVID-19 Tools Act Accelerator. In just three months, the accelerator has already shown results. As of today, nine vaccine candidates are already in the COVAX portfolio 
and going through phase two or three trials. And this portfolio, already the broadest in the world, is constantly expanding. And through the COVAX Global Vaccines Facility, countries that represent nearly 70% of the global population have signed up or expressed an interest to be part of the new initiative. The WHO has an August 31 deadline for wealthier nations to join the COVAX Global Vaccines Facility for sharing vaccine hopefuls with developing countries. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Jamaicans must learn to live with the COVID-19 virus and continue to take all necessary precautions. We cannot always return to lockdowns. We cannot always return to shutting down the country. We have to learn to live with COVID. And the way to live with COVID is for every single Jamaican to responsibly, faithfully, and consistently follow the infection prevention and control measures. And we know what these are. If you're going out in public, wear your mask. If you have to take public transportation, wear your mask. If you are ill with flu-like symptoms, respiratory challenges, if you're coughing, sneezing, stay at home. Reach out to the health services. If you are in a gathering of no more than 20, that should be, then ensure that you maintain social distance. Mr. Holness was speaking at a virtual press conference on Monday where he updated the nation on the response to the pandemic. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the health teams are making steady progress in the quarantine community of Sandy Bay in Clarendon. For Clarendon, the quarantine area in Clarendon, Sandy Bay and adjoining communities also seeing new cases of persons with, with symptoms. To date, the ministry has advised that their surveillance has covered more than 900 householders with more than 2,000 individuals interviewed. And based on the testing that has been done, some 22 persons have been identified as COVID positive. And of course, this scenario, based on the risk assessment, uh, indicates and has caused us to conclude, the, the health team that is, that a recommendation be given for an extension of the quarantine area. So again, concerns there. And the Sandy Bay community was initially placed under quarantine due to a recent increase in COVID-19 cases coming out of that parish. That measure was initially for two weeks and has since been extended. The Bank of Jamaica has decided to hold the policy interest rate unchanged at 0.50% per annum, effective Wednesday, August 19. The policy interest rate is offered to deposit-taking institutions on overnight placements with the central bank. The BOJ says its monetary policy decisions are aimed at ensuring that the annual increase in the prices of consumer goods and services remain within the 4.0% to 6.0% inflation target set by the government. And time now for a look at the latest foreign exchange prices and other market details. We go to the business report. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index declined by 1,683 points to close at just under 400,000 units. Overall, marketing activity resulted from trading in 73 stocks, of which 25 advanced, 39 declined, and 9 traded firm. The Junior Market Index advanced by 2 points to close at just under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for Access Financial Services, Berger Paints Jamaica, and Caribbean Cream Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Students Living Jamaica, 1834 Investments Limited, and Berita Investments Limited. Trading firm were Derrimon Trading Company, JMMB Group, and Maybury Jamaican Equities Limited. Wigton Farm Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 14.8 million units, followed by Sagicor Select Funds Limited Financial with 8.8 .8 million units and Jamaica Boilers Group with over 4 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. 
The U.S. dollar on Tuesday, August 18, ended trading at $151.04. The Canadian dollar sold for an average of $114.84. The pound sterling traded at $196.98. The euro ended trading at $181.24. Oil prices eased on Wednesday on concerns U.S. fuel demand will face a slow recovery amid stalled talks on an economic stimulus package and despite support from a bigger-than-expected drawdown in U.S. crude stocks. Brent crude futures fell $0.44 to $45.02 per barrel. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures were down $0.41 to $42.48 a barrel. And that's it for the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. The World Health Organization says the novel coronavirus pandemic is now being driven by people in their 20s, 30s and 40s who don't know they are infected. In this episode of Living Healthy, we look at the role of our young people in keeping their family healthy and informed. Evidence suggests that the spike in COVID-19 cases in some countries is partly due to younger people letting down their guard. World Health Organization boss Tedros Ghebreyesus says although older people are at a higher risk of severe COVID-19, young people are at risk too. One of the challenges we face is convincing younger people of this risk. As of Tuesday, August 18, COVID-19 has infected nearly 22 million people worldwide and it's killed at least 774,600. The WHO has published an analysis of 6 million infections between February 24 and July 12 and it found that the share of people between ages 15 and 24 rose to 15% from 4.5%. WHO's technical lead for COVID-19, Dr. Maria Van Kakov, spoke on the issue during a recent youth information session. All people can be infected with this virus. We know that, whatever age group they are. Um, what the data is telling us so far is that um, the majority of younger people who are infected tend to have a more mild disease. Um, but that's not always the case. So we do, that, we do know that young people and children uh, can develop severe disease and we do know that some young people, some children die. Um, and so it isn't universal. We are not invincible to this. Young people are not invincible to this. The other thing is that if you are infected, no matter what age you are, you can pass it to somebody else. So not only is it important to prevent yourself from getting infected and developing a disease, but you have a responsibility um, and some power here to prevent infecting somebody else. Um, and you could prevent infecting somebody else who's part of a vulnerable group who are at a higher risk of developing severe disease and death. Um, we're learning quite a lot about what mild disease means and what mild disease looks like um, and the recovery of some people. Um, we're starting to learn that there are some individuals who, e even though they had a, you know, what would be considered a mild disease and not really needing hospitalization, are having some long-term effects of difficulty breathing. You know, they're not able to get back up to exercising mm -hmm. the way that they would like. They're having fatigue. We don't completely know the disease profile yet. Um, I know this pandemic feels like we've been in it for an incredibly long time, but it's still new mm -hmm. and we're still learning it all, all the time. So it is important that we do, that you do everything you can to protect yourself, but do what you can to protect your mom and your grandma and your aunts and your loved ones, you know, because it is a responsibility that all of us have. And again, we just want everyone, and especially young people, to feel empowered. You have control, you have hope, you know, there's a lot that you can do. There's a lot that we can all do. Make sure that that information is accurate. Um, make sure that it is not myths, so it's not disinformation, um, and that it won't harm people and pass good information around. Dr. Van Kokov says young people have a responsibility to stay informed and share credible information. Try to avoid 
sources of news that may cause anxiety because there's a lot of information out there. A lot of it is quite scary. Um, some of it is wrong. Um, some of it is very, very good. Keep yourself informed, but try not to try not to overdo it. Um, and and I think do things that make you happy every day. Mm -hmm. So this pandemic is scary. This pandemic causes anxiety, um, but it does not stop us from listening to music or reading a book or laughing or talking with loved ones. Find the things that make you happy every day and make sure that you carve out a little bit of time to do that. And it's okay. It's okay to laugh and it's okay to, to have a little bit of fun in going through something like that. But make that time for yourself. The youths are being cautioned that while some people are asymptomatic, meaning they show no symptoms, they can transmit the virus to others who just might have a fatal reaction. Make sure that you avoid crowded places. Um, right now, this virus really likes crowds and it, it can spread between people in crowds. So if you can avoid those right now, um, that's important. Um, and if you're asked to, to do something like stay at home, please stay at home. You know, if you're asked to wear a mask, please wear a mask. Another way in which young people can play their role in this pandemic is by getting tested for COVID-19 should the need arise. For example, those who live in communities that are under quarantine, get tested and protect your family. Getting tested in this regard will help with contact tracing. Here's a look at how that works. COVID-19 continues to spread around the globe. You can help stop COVID-19 by participating in contact tracing. How does contact tracing work? Contact tracing is a system that has been used for decades to stop infectious diseases. A contact is anyone who has had direct physical contact or was within one meter for at least 15 minutes with an infected person, even if that person does not have symptoms. This applies to anyone who has had contact from two days before a person gets sick until 14 days afterwards, or from the 14 days when an asymptomatic case tested positive. Once you are confirmed as a contact, you will be asked to go into quarantine, which means to separate yourself from others and to monitor your health for any signs of illness. The monitoring ends on the 14th day from your last contact with the person infected with COVID-19. Quarantine can take place in a special facility outside of your home or at home if you can stay separated from family members. Why 14 days of quarantine? It can take from 1 to 14 days from contact with the virus to develop symptoms. During this time, you should stay in quarantine and monitor symptoms and follow instructions given to you if you become symptomatic. Without contact tracing and quarantine, the virus will continue to spread. This leads to more people becoming sick and infecting the most vulnerable. By identifying and limiting contacts of people infected with COVID-19, the virus stops spreading and the community stays safe. To break the chains of transmission, we all need to work together. If you become sick with COVID-19, stay away from others. Follow the recommendations of your medical care provider and share the list of people who you came in close contact with. With your help, we can prevent further spread of the virus and save more people's lives. By acting together, we can break the chains of COVID-19 transmission. And that's the Living Health Report this week on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. In regional news, St. Lucia has recorded its 26th COVID-19 case. It comes just one day after authority reiterated calls to St. Lucians to comply with the prescribed protocols. The details in this report. For just about one week, St. Lucia had the distinction of having no active novel coronavirus cases and no deaths from the disease. That all changed on Tuesday, not for the fatality figure, but with a 32-year-old returning national from the United States who was in government-operated quarantine, testing positive for the new coronavirus. Results received on Tuesday, August 18, 2020, reveals that St. Lucia has recorded a new case of COVID-19. The case is a 32-year-old female who traveled from the United States and has been in government quarantine from arrival. How is this latest patient doing? Dr. Sharon Belmer-George explains. 
She is stable and will be transferred to the respiratory hospital for care. This brings a total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 to date to 26. Health authorities in St. Lucia have warned against becoming complacent. They fear the favorable figures may lead the nation into a false sense of security. As we manage new cases and investigate possible contacts, the public is advised to take personal responsibilities to protect themselves and the family. We advise against mass crowd gatherings. We advise on responsible behavior without unnecessary panic. The public is also advised that all of the protocols are still in place. These also include the use of face masks in public places and to maintain safe physical distance from others. One of the concerns of health authorities is that of the illegal entry into St. Lucia, particularly from Martinique. This is seen as a weak link in St. Lucia's COVID-19 defense. The fear is one illegal entrant who has the disease can change the coronavirus reality in the community in which he or she settles and truly test St. Lucia's COVID-19 capabilities. Stanley Lucien for the HDS News Force. The top medical practitioners in St. Kitts and Nevis have outlined procedures and safety concerns surrounding the harboring of cruise ships. Glenn Bart tells us more. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws and Medical Chief of Staff Dr. Cameron Wilkinson address procedures and safety issues associated with the safe harboring of two RCCL cruise ships to dock in St. Kitts. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line requested permission to have the ship's safe harbor in St. Kitts with 70 crew members on each of the two ships. In a press conference held on the 17th August 2020, the medical authorities informed that all of the COVID-19 protocols and regulations will apply for the safe harboring of the two vessels. The ships come into port. Um, we are going to be setting up tents on the port, on the and then the crew members will be escorted individually to the separate tents. Their samples will be ascertained and the samples will be sent to the next generation lab for processing. So the individual crew members will exit the ship, be sampled, and then they will be directed back on board for compulsory quarantine. And they will only be released and, be and allowed integration into society if and when they are RT-PCR tests come back as negative. Just to add one last thing, in terms of allowing persons to come back into our country, I believe that this is one of the safest efforts that we are embarking upon because these are persons who have been virtually isolated on a ship for the last five months. As the Minister of Tourism said, they have not disembarked in any other country. And if it were, that uh, there was a positive case of COVID-19 on that ship. There should have been some symptomatic manifestation unless by some divine intervention they have all been asymptomatic for uh, 15 months. But even then, they should have recovered. Secondly, in terms of being able to quarantine them, this again is the best quarantine facility where all 70 plus persons would be in one location on the ship. And thirdly, in terms of the security that will be put in place to make sure that these persons stay on the ship and the quarantine is not like with uh, having someone at a local coming home and in the early days you have to be chasing them down to see whether or not they were staying at home. It's very easy to manage these persons and to make sure that the forcing the quarantine is enforced with security persons at the door. So I believe that the risk uh, associated with bringing these ships here is very, very low, and there has to be a balance between the risk and the economy. These ships are not on any cruise schedule and do not have passengers on board. Glenn Barth, SKN Newsline. Parts of South Trinidad remained underwater for most of Tuesday after early morning rain caused flooding in penal and surrounding areas. Crystal Wilson tells us that while residents were extremely concerned, they were thankful the floods did not do more damage to their homes. There was water everywhere. These were the sites at Penal Rock Road on Tuesday morning. One resident, Samde Mutilal, told TTT News it rained for most of the night, but it was from 5 a.m. The weather pattern seemed to have changed. Yeah, last night I was sleeping and this rain come down. 
And the way this rain started to fall, I feel like the house go break down. I feel like the partition and things shaking. And the way the water falling in the galvanized, my chest started to pain because I have this peacemaker in my chest. When the rains subsided, residents on checking noticed there was little or no damage to their property. Luckily, well, we were able to move out everything, lift everything higher, and well, no, nothing was damaged, and it's just the clean up now. On hand to assess possible damage and offer assistance to residents in need was chairman of the Penal Debia Regional Corporation, Dr. Alan Sami, who said the corporation will for a while remain on standby. Well, well what our disaster unit has been on alert since last night and of course our dinghy operators are on standby and the shelters which people don't customarily use in Penal Debia, they have been on alerted, there are only two shelters alerted so far. But yes, we are, um, we are continued to be in disaster mode, if you wish. So far, there have not been any claims by residents for immediate assistance. Crystal Wilson, TDT News. In sports, two-time champions, the Jamaica Tallowas squared off against the St. Lucia Zooks at the Brian Lara Stadium in Trinidad today in the 2020 Caribbean Premier League. The Tallowas, who are being led by Rovan Powell, won the title in 2013 and again in 2016. The Zooks are yet to lift the crown. Meanwhile, a man of the match performance from Sunil Narayan carried the Trinbago Knight Riders to a four-wicket win over the Guyana Amazon Warriors in the opening game of the tournament on Tuesday. The tournament is being held in Trinidad and Tobago and without spectators as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup tournament has been given new dates in light of the global disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The preliminary rounds of the Gold Cup tournament will now be staged from July 2 to 6, 2021. The tournament is slated to be held on July 10 to August 1. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, People's Station.